तो हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज प्रीतम पॉल एंड वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सो दिस इज अनदर वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द एग्जामिनेशन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड जीआरई व्हिच इज ग्रेजुएट रिकॉर्ड एग्जामिनेशंस सो इफ यू आर प्लानिंग योर मास्टर्स आउटसाइड ऑफ इंडिया देन यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट जीआरई एग्जामिनेशन एंड यू मस्ट नो दैट हाउ मच इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज so if you do not know then let me tell you one simple in 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 few simple words if i explain that gre is a mandatory thing if you are applying for us and canada universities but in case of europe uh, this is not a mandatory mandatory thing uh, few universities ask for gre and if you do not have a good cgpa then gre would be a better replacement uh, or if i say that gre would be that that examination that score which will make up your profile uh, to reflect as a good profile while you will be applying for the uh, german or other european universities so uh, in short it is a very important examination it's a must thing as i have said uh, earlier also so that's why i thought that i should make a video on it and uh, so to discuss about all these things and obviously another thing is there right, guys uh, gre needs a means decent score which is uh, for if I, if i if i say that then uh, 320 plus score is a means most important standard in case of top most universities in us and canada if you do not get the 320 plus score then the probability will be less to get the admission right so that's why it's very important to know how to prepare that uh, that exam for that exam uh, for getting 320 plus score so to discuss about all these things that how to prepare uh, yourself for 320 plus score i have invited a guest uh, he is arkadeep bhattacharya and uh, he has done his masters from ucla which is uh, university of california los angeles and he scored 321 in gre so if you didn't watch his previous video on my channel that how did he complete how did he prepare how did he uh, frame his profile to get the, the admission in ucla so please hit the i button and uh, watch that video if you want to know about uh, his journey and uh, if you are new to the channel also please do hit the subscribe button because uh, it's very important for me also it motivates me a lot to make more videos on it as i am trying to make a platform for you guys uh, so that you could have a better understanding better uh, image or better idea about how to how to make your profile so good to apply for higher studies in foreign countries as well as different iits also i have tried to make a lot of videos and still trying so please do support the channel uh, please hit the subscribe button so without wasting the time guys let's start the video let's introduce orko so the, here this is orkadeep bhattacharya if you do not know him then uh, as i have said uh, you can watch the, his previous video on my channel uh, just go to that video and obviously you will uh, have a lot of information about that ms application in the usa so let's just start now uh, so hi orko welcome again to my youtube channel and thank you so much for giving the time so let's start that yeah let's start the thing first of all let me ask you one thing that uh, you have scored uh, 321 plus so uh, what do you think uh, that uh, this is a basic question right that most of the people say that uh, pe prepare for your uh, exam first and after that uh, book for it uh, book for the slot uh, in the ats website or uh, few people also say that that uh, right. means uh, book for the test first and after that prepare accordingly so that you could have a vision to accomplish so what do you think which one is good so according to me uh, i think it's a good idea to start preparing uh, and the timeline to prepare is around 3 uh, months to 5 months uh, in my case i genuinely prepared for Three months, uh, but uh, people start preparing five months or six months ahead as well, depending on how much how strong their English is. So there are various ETS centers around the country, and the goal for you would be to select the closest uh, city or or town which has an ETS center, and um, book your examination. I would say at least a month before. you are confident uh, to give your exam uh, some people book book it way ahead uh, 
but the thing is, uh, with your preparation, some some emergency might happen, and you might not be able to prepare, uh, or some exams might come in, or some other important like things might happen, and it costs a lot of money to book the examination. It's a uh, I'm around sure fourteen thousand rupees, I guess. Yes, it costs around fourteen thousand rupees. So, <clears throat> roughly around two hundred dollars when I I get the exam like uh, two years back. So, before booking exam, like make sure that that date is free and uh, you are almost almost sixty percent done with your or fifty percent done with your preparation. So this is a, this is also another important question that when a BTEC student uh, should go for GRE in which semester? So first of all, let me ask you that when did you give GRE in which semester? Uh, so I gave my GRE in my uh, seventh semester, which is like uh, after my third year ended and my fourth year began. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that in the month of I gave in like pretty late in the month of November, mm -hmm. uh, but you can give it starting from September. Uh, October that would be an ideal time. September and October would be an ideal time to give your GRE exam because your application deadlines are uh, December first to December end of December or first week of January for almost all U.S. universities. Okay, and uh, the Canadian Canadian universities uh, deadlines would be starting after the January, right? Yes. So, so Canadian universities are slightly like you have more time. But okay. if you want to apply to all of them, uh, then ideal, October would be the ideal month, I guess. Is that so? September, October would be ideal. Okay. Uh, and generally, everyone gives it in their final year. Uh, but you can give it in your second year or for th like third year. But very few people have that much clarity early on uh, whether they want to go uh, for masters or not. So the third year is usually also the, the time when you're done with all your internships and you are more confident whether you want to do some like go for a master's so that's the time that most people give it yeah okay uh, let's directly go to your preparation strategy so first of all uh, let, tell me about uh, tell, tell, tell the audience about the GRE examination and after that uh, let's uh, go for your uh, preparation strategies how did you start so let's discuss that yeah all right uh, so to begin with uh, the GRE exam uh, is a three and a half hour to four hours exam, uh, and it has three sections. Uh, it has it has an analytical writing section, and it has a verbal reasoning section and a quantitative reasoning section. So overall, it has three sections, and these sections come in alternate like alternate um, uh, steps. So it, you start with the writing section, and then you have you might get a quant quantitative section which is which might be followed by an analytical or two analytical followed by one one quantitative depending on uh, depending on the computer because it's completely random it depends on the computer and the test is also adaptive so depending on how 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 you are performing during the test the test will become easier or harder uh, as you go so uh, but you don't have to keep all of that in mind you just have to um, give your best and answer the questions so I started preparing uh, uh, at the at the end of August, and I prepared for September and October. So I got kind of three months, like not even three months, but two and a half months to prepare. But uh, I knew I, I wanted to give GRE exam, so I started developing my vocabulary uh, way earlier. And I also have a read like a habit of reading uh, literature or like books. Or, uh, or newspapers or articles. So uh, I kind of had that kind of a fundamental uh, advantage in speaking and uh, and proficiency in English. Uh, and so I I kind of was confident with my preparation in two and a half months. Uh, but most people, yeah, three months is an ideal time uh, because if you prepare for six months or more than that, then you start to forget whatever you have learned at the beginning. So uh, it's more about how many words can you learn and how many words can you remember and the context of those words uh, the, the, and how they are used in sentences or paragraphs. That's the most important part. So to remember all, all those words and difficult words in English, you have to read more and you have to kind of uh, develop a routine, like a, like a regular routine of, uh, of working, uh, like remembering those words and trying to find the correct usage of those words. 
so that was my overall uh, preparation because uh, the quantitative section of gre is uh, is comparatively easy it's high school it's high school or 12 standard math uh, it it does not have calculus um, uh, so if you are in engineering uh, that kind of ma mathematics will be very easy for you so this was the like a overall gist of like my preparation strategy okay so now uh, let's go to one by one uh, first of all let me uh, ask you about the analytical writing so how did you practice prepare yourself to get a i guess uh, you got i guess four out of five right uh, in analytical writing yes so so let me t uh, let me uh, just uh, let us know about that one yeah okay so analytical writing part was probably the toughest for me uh, out of the three sections because it has uh, it has two uh, essays that you have to write uh, one of them is an argument essay and one of them is an issue essay and uh, uh, the exam only gives you 30 minutes to read the passage like a like a topic that they will give you or an argument that they will give you and in those in those 30 minutes you have to plan out your essay and you have to complete your essay and generally it has five parts uh i kind of divided it in five parts like an introduction with two uh two body passages and one conclusion and one one extra passage uh, that you might include so the thing is uh in both these uh sections like the argument and the issue 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 uh uh writing parts uh the main thing that i did was uh practice typing so you your typing speed has to be very good uh and your note taking capabilities uh, should be good because gre if you are giving the computer based test they will have like a editor in which you can only copy paste or cut uh, there will not be any uh, dictionary which will correct your uh, spelling there would not be any suggestions like like you get in microsoft word uh, so the first thing would be to read what what the instructions that is given in the question and then kind of chalk out what you will write in each paragraph so you start with para 1 para 2 para 3 para 4 and conclusion conclusion is just a restatement of whatever you have written throughout your essay uh, conclusion is just restatement so each paragraph you have to like kind of plan out the things that you want to say uh and one general thing that i would say is don't take too extreme uh, uh extreme uh opinions so whenever you are given like an argument or you are given an issue uh, try to balance uh, things like try to give your opinion from both ends like let's say there is a topic which says that uh, uh sports should be encouraged uh, uh, over academics for students in that case there there are many advantages of uh, like encouraging students for going like for encouraging students to do sports or uh, or have more sports activities but there the academics is also important right so you have to kind of balance out all the points uh, if there is an argument question or even an issue question uh, uh you can you can give your own opinions and you can take sides uh, but also try, like try to give the like the opposite uh, opposite opinion in that in that way you will have more points to talk about and also uh, uh one more thing that you want to keep in mind that is you can give like factual things like something you that you might have read from a newspaper or 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 some facts that you have learned from general knowledge you can include those facts you can write in first person so you can say that i believe this or i believe that you can include that so don't be afraid to do that uh, and i think that's like a general so more and more practice is what you have to do like you have to time your uh, time yourself while you are writing something so what i used to do was uh, like have a timer like a 30 minute timer in front of me and then i did not start uh, like look at the question before starting the timer i started the timer then i looked at the question and in within 30 minutes i tried to complete that essay even if i could not complete it initially it it took some time for me to complete it and make like a good essay with a conclusion and that made sense uh, within 30 minutes so that should be your target like you have to write something and complete it within 30 minutes okay so time is a very big factor yes okay and uh, what are what kind of uh, means uh, topics they might ask in the analytical writing section can you please tell us about that the topics can range from anything it can range for academic issues like scientific uh, they they might 
they might say they might mention a, about a harvard or a stanford study about some psychological behavior of people and say that the, this is this has been shown in a recent study what are your opinion on it what is your opinion on it or there can be like a like an argument like uh, there can be a contrasting argument which says that um, uh, republican opinions are more uh, are more uh, uh, backward or less progressive than than uh, than than left uh, than uh, liberal opinions right so in that case they will give you like contrasting uh, things in that like two or three lines that they will give and then they will tell you specific instructions they will give so m- the first goal should be to follow that instruction they will tell you specifically what you need to write uh, what you need to focus on and what points do you need to point out in your essay so always keep that in mind uh, and then read the topic that is given yeah so the you have to follow the instruction because uh, whatever instructions are given in the question you have to your essay should address all of those because if you don't then they will like deduct points from your writing part yeah so now let's go to the quantitative section uh, please tell us about that how did you prepare and how one should prepare to get a good score by the way uh, what was the uh, score in your quant section uh my score was 164 out of 170 okay so please yeah please tell us about that uh so quant section in gre is pretty straight forward if uh we are from uh we are completed our education from indian schools or indian engineering universities or whatever we have done uh is pretty like much more advanced than the questions which are asked on the gre quantitative sections so it will it will range from basic algebra it will be it will have inequalities it will have number properties uh it will have arithmetic uh there will be some basic geometry uh and there will be statistics uh and 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 uh, interpreting data so data is slightly difficult uh out of all the sections that i de- practiced and gave i i personally felt that data interpretation and statistics part was slightly more difficult than other sections and with the other sections it's just like how fast you can do a problem that's it there is nothing there is nothing like it's not like uh, any tough question will be given to you simple equations uh, there will be word problems like uh, rate of work if you remember in class 10th or 12th like problems like yeah two people do a certain amount of work in like five days one guy does it in one day how many will like like that kind of those kind of questions are there which is which comes under word problems um and there will be inequalities uh, basic inequalities there will be geometry uh um uh, where like two perpendicular lines have if you multiply both of them their their slopes will add up to minus 1 those kind of questions very simple uh not very difficult the main thing is that you have to practice a lot so that you can attempt as many questions as you can within that uh one hour time or 70 minutes i think you get 35 minutes each section there there will be two sections for quant uh and do, they can come like uh, subsequently like one after the other so 35 35 sub, like one after the other or there could be like 35 then you go back to verbal and then again 35 of quant so those 70 minutes you have to like you have to be like very fast in solving those questions and one very important thing is you don't have any calculator so you cannot take any calculator to the exam there will only be an on screen calculator on your on your computer screen on is that you can that you can use and you have to use your mouse to type your uh, numbers there for basic calculation like addition division uh, multiplication and uh, and all all those subtraction things you cannot do calculus or or maxima minima or all those things those complicated things are not there so just a basic uh, so whenever you are doing like a practicing this from a book or something then avoid a calculator that's my that's my opinion because avoid it or at least use like a like a microsoft calculator on your on your uh, computer not like a scientific calculator okay so uh, I here uh, i want to say one thing that uh, if you do, if you are uh, very slow in your calculations then you can learn the vedic mathematics calculation tricks also by which you can easily multiply or divide or any kind of arithmetic calculation very easily with various 
uh, innovative techniques so you can go through them also there are various resources on youtube so you can go through them i found them very interesting and very helpful uh, for calculating any kind of calculation right so like specific preparation related to quant section will take a lot of time but i would say just like practice as much as you can and get an idea of what kind of questions they ask because you will not get the same questions uh, obviously they do not repeat any questions uh, but the basic type of questions is the same so you are not going to get anything outside uh, outside what you have prepared in any of the books that you that you choose to like you choose to like prepare from uh, just make sure that you attempt all kind of questions and practice for speed that's the main criteria so the main thing is speed like uh, difficulty is is very easy uh, even if you are if you even if you are an average student uh, even from uh, so these exams are given by all kind of students like not not only engineering students like people from economics or arts even they have to give gre so you won't get calculus you won't get integration differentiation you won't get uh, you won't get like uh, difficult permutation combination or probability problems but there will be probability and uh, combinatorics uh, comb- combinatorics questions sequence and series but very simple ones like formula based so uh, as as you all know that there are two sections in quant so uh, what did you do that have you practiced for section based or the whole quant part or the each section uh, each question how much time do you need uh, how did you practice please tell us about that so for the quant section initially i just like uh, took a specific book and i started solving questions without any time uh, i did like lot of questions i did all kinds of like a little bit of like few questions from every uh, the every section of the syllabus so there is a specific syllabus as i just mentioned uh, which covers arithmetic uh, algebra uh, geometry uh, stats uh, and all of that you can look at the ets official guide they, they will have the syllabus there whatever all is there so i did a little bit of questions to get an idea of what kind of questions initially there like the, the exams will have but as i like practice more and more with like as the exam dates uh, were coming closer i started doing like time tests and uh, so you can take like a 35 minute time timer and uh, try to solve like uh, sample papers uh, uh, there are various sample papers online you can buy a subscription to some websites where you can go and solve those questions so i did all of that uh, closer to the examination closer closer to my uh, exam date now uh, let's talk about the verbal section so it is very first of all let's uh, uh, let us know that how, what are the types of questions come in the verbal section and after that uh, tell us about that how did you prepare uh, yourself to have a good vocabulary and how did you prepare for the uh, vocabulary section also for gre so the main difficult part that most indian students face in gre is the verbal reasoning section and it's it's kind of uh, very difficult english uh, average americans don't use this kind of english in daily life and you will never use this kind of english in like uh, in your in your masters or whatever you do unless you do some like uh, uh, unless you are in literature or you are doing arts or or you are doing like journalism or something like that uh, but the main thing is to develop a huge huge memory and knowledge of words and these words can be pretty strange and pretty like rare used words rarely used words they are, they you can't find these words even in like good uh, indian newspapers like hindu or statesman so one thing that i did was i picked up a few uh, magazines from the united states uh, one of them is the new york times so new york times is a good like has a good vocabulary so go to new york times and look at the edit- editorials uh that has a good like uh they have articles based on uh, issues uh, on on various uh, contemporary issues the historical issues where uh, just read through that and not only read that while you are reading that try to save that article in a pdf format and whenever you are reading through it mark important words and not only mark those important words what i used to do was i took those words and i created flash cards 
So there are something called flashcards, which are very, very important for you to remember those words, because you can, you can go through hundred words in a day and tomorrow morning when you woke up, wake up, you will not remember five of them. So memory is very, it's very difficult to remember these words unless you know what they are used in. So if you read those articles and you remember the context in which those words were used, that is very important. Just blindly going through a dictionary and starting memorizing words will not help. Uh, you will not be able to go, like remember even half of them. So the main thing is not only to understand those words, but to understand in what context they are used. Because the same word can be used in different contexts. The same word can be placed in different parts of a sentence or different, uh, different paragraphs or different, uh, different situation and it would mean completely different. And that is very important because in GRE you have to, there is a, there's a part called uh, 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 sentence equivalence where there would be two words which might not be synonyms, but they would be used in a sentence together and they would kind of sound similar. So that needs like rigorous uh, knowledge and, and memory of those words and their usage. So in order to do that, the flashcards thing that I, that I said that I used to have like these kind of, if you, if, you, if you have like sticky notes. So I bought a huge bunch of sticky notes and I, what I used to do was I used to write down a new word whenever I read something. And then I used to find synonyms of those words from the dictionary and write down those synonyms beneath those words. Okay. And I only used to have those words and the synonyms on the front side of that card. On the back side of the card, I used to write down the meaning and the usage of that word. What does this word mean? And where does this word, where is this word being used? And when I used to revise, I used to bring that box of cards. I used to see a card every day and I used to try to remember what that word means. And if I got it correct or wrong, I just turned that backwards and I saw the meaning. If, if I, if I, if I didn't remember that word, I kept it aside and whatever words I remembered, I kept it like back in the box. And then I went through them again. So that's the process that I adopted, but there are like, you can buy flashcards from GRE or some other companies have flashcards with exactly these things, which are, which are printed on a card. But the problem with that is whenever you are writing something on a card, whenever you are writing those words, whenever you're writing them down by your own hand and you're finding information from other dictionaries or, or reading articles, it sticks in your brain much, much easier and you can learn faster. It might seem be a bit tedious and very like a lot of hard work, but it, you will remember much more words more efficiently in a shorter amount of time. So, so you are saying that idea. writing those things are more efficient than learning from any app and all, right? Definitely. So with the vocabulary thing, one more thing that I wanted to mention was, uh, there's a, uh, right. So, uh, with regards to like, uh, there are various resources that you can find online for learning words. So one thing would be there are a lot of books with like word word lists that come on GRE frequently. And these words are worth learning because a dictionary, English dictionary has a lot of words. You can't learn all of them. So uh, these word lists are very important and uh, I will recommend some books at the end. Uh, but these, uh, these word lists you can go through and and try to uh, mark important words from there and include that in your flashcards. But ultimately you have to prepare from flashcards or use some app uh, where there are like fl flashcards uh, show up every day or there's some challenges like quizzes, which asks you about new, like, like how a word is used in a sentence. Uh, there are various apps on Play Store or Apple Store, whatever you're using. You can go there and, and, and uh, play some games on those apps and increase your level. Uh, that is also something I did, but flashcard was my main way of preparing vocab. And other than that, there's comprehension for comprehension in the vocab, uh, in the, in the verbal reasoning section is also, I think much more difficult because you need to actively read that passage. Uh, you just can't read it and like, just, uh, uh, try to remember everything because you can't. Um, so what you need to do is always when you are trying to, trying to, uh, uh, read a passage. Uh, don't take your pencil and start like start marking on the thing because when you're giving a computer-based test, you, you won't have anything to mark on your screen. 
so the main thing is whenever you are reading from a book even if you are preparing from a book like a physical book uh you read the passage from that book and you have a separate like a small piece of paper like a scratch card and that scratch card is size of a, like a small square rectangular uh, uh uh sticky note that they will give you with a pencil they will not give you a pen so you have a h1b pencil and a small, small scratch card with limited space and you practice like taking notes whenever you are going through like you went through the first paragraph of your comprehension you summarize what you have read and you mark down important points of what you understood without looking at the questions so there would be a comprehension followed by various set of questions like typically there are five to six questions uh, which will ask you about specific meanings of words or specific meaning of a passage or they will ask you uh, uh uh whether they will give you a sentence and it will, and they will ask you whether this sentence is in agreement or is in uh supporting role or supporting the comprehension right so you have to critically analyze the passage as you are reading and you don't have time to read it two times or three times so you have to you have to take notes while you are reading that comprehension because you cannot do it like multiple you cannot don't have time to read it multiple times it will just be wasted of time so so what you do is you take a pencil and you note down important points and what you think about that passage and summarize everything in your own words and after you have done that you have that paper in front of you and then you look at the question most of the time this works because you will get like a clear you will know whether you are able to understand that passage or not because most of the time what people do is look at the question and then look back at the comprehension look at the question and go back to the comprehension and try to find that specific portion of in the comprehension where that thing is mentioned right that's how we do comprehension in 11th or 12th uh, that's not how gre works though because uh, they don't ask directly from a passage they will always have inferential questions they will always have questions which will need you to understand the passage what the author is trying to say in that passage uh, what the author is trying to imply in that passage because sometimes the author doesn't say anything in that passage and the question asks you does the author mean this or does the what can you infer about the author's intentions uh, what is the intention of the author so in order to understand all of that you need to do a lot of reading so practice is the main thing so you have to read as many passages as you can these passages are mostly like uh, 300 words or 200 words not longer than that they are sometimes they are one para or at max they are two para not more than that they will not give you a whole like a two page essay to read and you will have like six questions i think uh, uh, six or four questions in in your in your each section that is 30 minutes or or yeah something like that so uh i think those were some things that you should keep in mind while reading or understanding the comprehension part of the verbal reasoning uh yeah and that's what i followed i think it 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 helped me a lot okay so we have covered all the uh, sections obviously the quant the analytical writing and the verbal also now uh, i have a question which i wanted to ask actually the thing is uh, means for example uh, you have uh, let's play safe okay uh, as you have said that you have a better understanding in english from the earlier part of your uh, career so mm-hmm. uh, i am considering that a student which is not from english medium which is, who is not proficient in english so let's yes. play safe let's uh, let's make the bandwidth of 6 months okay and now uh, he has started the preparation and he has started by analytical writing okay he has started uh, trying he has started by trying to write something so what do you think that uh, should any student complete the sections one by one like one month two month two month five month and after that one month for the whole after all preparation or uh, the thing is uh, like uh, he would be preparing from the first first day he has started for analytical writing but after few days he started quant also and after few days of quant he will start uh, means uh, verbal also and parallelly they they have to prepare and another thing i want to ask that uh, how many hours should any student any college student should give for uh, preparing the gre so that's a very good question and for people who do, who do not have much reading experience or literature experience because i personally come from icse background and uh, i have had always been interested in reading literature and fiction but most people uh, do not come from english medium background or 
some people are doing from hindi medium or or some people are from bengali medium other languages are there in india many people so for those people i would suggest that whenever you are starting out in your 6 month like period of giving gre i would suggest uh instead of reading like novels i would suggest reading difficult articles from america uh as i suggest atlantic is there there is washington post and boston uh, globe there, there, another there is, one is there there is washington globe as well there is new york times as well uh try to read the news or specifically editorials um uh, from there and try to understand them that would be the first part like try to understand important words and whenever you're not understanding a word don't skip it go back to the dictionary or have a separate tab in your in your google chrome or whatever and uh, go to that website and the dictionary website i used to use like dictionary.com it's also pretty good uh, it's free uh, you just go there and type your word or google you can google it and and note down the meaning of that word and then go back to the article and try to uh, read that sentence again whenever you're not understanding any sentence go back and read that sentence again and try to make sense of it so the process would be difficult but i would say reading more would help definitely reading more would help and in terms of writing aspect uh, i think writing essays like 300 word essays uh, taking a topic from any book or any article or there are very various uh, like there are many books in 10th or 12th where you had might like you had like essay books right where you have like a topic and a sample essay given on that book right so there are essay books like good books with with example essays so first of all try to read that topic and try to read that essay that an answer and then try to write it on your, in your own words i'm not saying memorizing everything but the thing is you have to write it on your own like write it by your hand don't just read uh, for writing you have to write it um uh, those are some of the tips i would give to people who are not from an english medium background try to read more and write Uh, for the writing part write on your write uh, something on a topic on your own and then get it checked by maybe someone who is good a friend who is like who is good in english or maybe a teacher uh, or a tutor who might help you with english get it checked by them that's a good point to start and regarding like parallel preparation uh, an important thing to remember is the gre exam while you are giving it you will get quant and verbal sub like one after the other in tandem you will not get separate time for a quant or separate time for verbal you will have to give it within 3 and a half hours and it is very 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 difficult to uh do that simultaneously and that's a very important part because if you go on practicing for 3 months of your initial time you go on practicing verbal and in the last 3 months you do your quant in your exam you will see that your scores will not be as good so whenever you are practicing i would say in a particular in a in a in a day maybe if you are if you are you can you can practice from anywhere between 3 hours to 5 hours i wouldn't say do more than that because i personally did it uh, you don't need to put in 8 hours or 12 hours every day you just have to put in like 3 to 5 hours and within that you divide your time maybe do like 2 hours of quant followed by 2 hours of uh, reading something followed by 1 hour of uh, maybe uh, reading some new words or remembering some new words or working on your flash cards so start working on a flash cards early like if you start from if you if you start from scratch i would say start working on a flash cards from day one every day you try to learn at least five new words five new words every day i think is good if you have six months it's more than enough to have like a good list of at least 500 to 1000 words uh, of those flash cards that you prepare and then you have to revise it so you have to give some time for revision as well right so i wouldn't say like put in more than 3 to 5 hours each day but uh um but try to maintain a balance between quant and writing and uh, like do it every week like don't go on solving quant questions for like 3 months and then do like verbal questions for 3 months i wouldn't recommend it
okay so let me ask you another question that uh, for example if anyone is preparing uh, for uh, flash cards for vocab for building the vocab and he is just uh, going through the flash cards so five as you have said that five words uh, per day so after uh, for example uh, after one week okay or after two week or after three week so he would have a lot of words so how did uh, right. how should anyone uh, revise also means it, it would be like that uh, six days in a week and after that uh, once in a week that in the sundays or any day means in the seventh day uh, he could uh, revise all those things so what will be the strategy for that one please tell us about that yeah yeah so as i said mentioned as i mentioned before as well uh, what i used to do was whenever i was done with all the writing all the words at the end of the day before going to sleep whenever you are sleeping you try to have like read five cards five new words okay you have written maybe uh, and try to remember it just give it like read all the things where they are used what are the synonyms sleep over wake up the next day and the first thing that you do in morning is look at those cards and try to remember if you uh, try to try to think like remember if you uh, if you remember the meaning of that word okay so if you do that like over sleep i think it sticks much much more uh, efficiently but uh, over long term i think revision is important so this is the same way like you look at a card like pick up a word that you might have learned like two weeks back okay so there's a word that you learned maybe two weeks back and you kind of uh, like went through the list of your uh, flash card and you don't remember that you don't remember the meaning what you do is separate it uh, separate all those words which you don't remember from your from your uh, set of flash cards and try to go through them again and do them in the night as i said and then when you remember it then put it back and then you again do it like maybe next week or two weeks later you can do it um and it will eventually stick like you have to make it stick some words you will you know, as you practice more and more you know that these words are important because th some words are used repetitively there are some words which are used like much more frequently and those will come on the exam and you will get to know that these words are important okay so after all these discussions now let's talk about the resources where which resource would be good for the quan which resource would be good for the vocab what resource would be good for the building the vocab and also in details please uh, share with us all right so when you look at online there are like thousands of resources for gre but you can choose any one of them i am not recommending that any any one is like the golden standard A lot of people follow different strategies uh i personally followed the manhattan 5 lb book for gre practice questions it's the green book which is around 1200 pages i bought the book it was not an e book i bought the book uh, i ordered it uh, and i practiced on that physical book like the manhattan 5 lb book of practice problems it has all the questions uh, it has multiple sets multiple difficulties for each section so for quant it has like it no it it has like multiple questions for each section of the of those quant for verbal it has uh, practice questions and sample answers as well for your essays for analytical writing it has sample answers for uh, for for text completion and sentence equivalence it has answers at the end of everything so it's a complete book and over the course of 3 months i went over this book two times i solved the entire book all questions uh, almost 99% of all like everything uh, i went through it like two times uh, other than this uh, there is an official gre guide uh, official gre guide which which lays down like the exam strategies and what all comes in exam and it also has a few practice questions uh, so also definitely go through that uh, other than that there is a princeton review uh princeton review is a book that you have that i bought online uh and it has some good strategies for verbal verbal reasoning how to improve your reading how to improve your comprehension sections like how to score well in that how to how to strategize so a lot of the things that i mentioned like taking notes uh, while doing the while doing your comprehension uh, how to learn more words how to improve your vocabulary princeton review has a good strategy book it's a good strategy book it's not it's a good practice book uh, it doesn't have many practice questions but it's a good strategy book so whenever you have free time like and go through the book to have like improve your strategy of 
improving the exam uh, other than that i didn't prepare for any other book uh, for for uh, for exams for mock tests uh, you can go to gre and gre has official uh, power prep series which has like we can buy those tests whenever you're buying the gre test for 200 dollars or something you can buy this power prep test i think one of them is free but you can buy an additional one so i bought two power prep um, tests these are time tests which are which happen at a, which, which you can take at any time before you give the gre exam and you have to give them at least like uh, five days for you for for them to give you a complete feedback so they will give you percentile uh, they will compare your score to last year's official gre scores so you can get a correct estimate of where you stand uh, it will give you your percentile it will give you your uh, uh, estimate score like 3 319 or 315 whatever they give uh, and that is the most accurate estimation of what you can actually score on your exam so i scored 317 uh, that was my best on the power prep uh, power prep uh, both the tests that i gave 317 was my highest and that is the common trend if you score 317 you will score like four five points higher than that in your actual exam because these power prep tests are much more like slightly more harder than the actual gre exam uh, and i would say you take one of the test like uh, one month before your exam and take the second power prep test uh, maybe 7 days before your exam so in that way you can practice and know where you stand and practice accordingly Uh, other than that there is princeton review and princeton review if you buy that book from princeton review uh, i think you can get it on amazon or something it's pretty uh, there are some discounts sometimes or you can get it from a friend they give you a code for uh, princeton review uh, mock tests and these mock tests are also very good because they also analyze your analytical writing part because most of the tests online which you whichever you buy they don't give you your uh, analytical writing assessment they don't give you feedback on your writing part because that has to be done by a manual person like that has to be done by a person who reads your text and kinds of gives you the errors and grammatical errors it 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 is done by a manual like, like a person so gre or the power prep does that and the princeton does that so um, these are two tests that i took and the the, the princeton was i think five four test series i took them somewhere between one month to to 15 days before my exam in addition to my power prep official tests uh, uh other than that there are various services i'm not going to recommend anything but there are various companies uh which uh which have like gr uh, gre preparation material and they also give you like uh, test material uh, uh uh like magush was one they have a free app uh that magush app that you can download from play store or 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 i or uh, apple store and it has a uh, flash card it has a quiz um and it gives you good word recommendations every day you can practice on that app i use that app personally uh, uh they also have a subscription which you don't have to buy uh, if you want you can uh but magush is one example and uh, there are other indian companies uh which uh you can pay some amount of money and they will schedule some tests for you so, so all of that depends on you uh, depends on your choice but overall yeah that's the material that i prepared with but other than that there are other various books there is barons uh there are lot of other books as well like uh, kaplan but, uh, also there is a book there is kaplan yes so uh do not do not try to prepare from like 10 different books select one book and do it like two times at least yeah like, manhattan five will be the best one to prepare for everything uh, that is the best book in the market which everyone talks about and personally i also have yes. seen that book is very useful yes so yeah. i would recommend the primary book that you are buying you buy it like a physical version and try to solve on on the book or have that book in your hand all others can be e books like you don't have to buy anything everything available else is available online so you can buy ebooks and all from from all yeah if you if you want ebooks then you can uh, let us know comments below and i will put the uh, drive link in the description i have a drive where all the books are there so if you want then let me know through comments below guys so this is the uh, whole topic i know the video is much more longer than the normal one but uh, it has to be because uh, 
we want that uh, it should be a detailed explanation so that you could prepare you could it would be helpful for you to prepare well so this is the ending part and if you have any kind of doubt uh, then let let just let us know through comments below there and if you really like the video if you uh, found this video useful then uh, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe the channel for more upcoming videos and uh, press the bell icon so that every video could be reached you through notification and to support the channel guys please i am saying again and again please hit the subscribe button if you uh, want to uh, support the channel so this is the ending part and uh, see you on the next video